do you want to maybe have something that you can write on and you can just like jot down something if you yeah yeah i'll take some notes here it, it might be easier if you do it like in the email so you can just send that to me <laughs> do you mind yeah that's no problem all right i'm just gonna do it it, it probably sounds weird because i'm gonna start to try to be passionate something <laughs> okay so um someone will introduce me then i just straight start the talk and then okay when you're ready i'm ready go ahead okay. what do you want to do in the future i get this question a lot since a young age coming from a business family Though my parents never explicitly tell me what I should do or learn business in the future, I have always sensed the expectation. Whether it being my dad brings me to one of to his business dinners or my mom talks to me about how her funds work. However, when I'm away, in fact, all the way across the Pacific Ocean in the U.S., I was free to choose my activities, and it turned out that I really enjoyed Model UN. I found that I'm interested in helping people in international affairs. So since then, I would always say that I wanted to work in the UN in the future. But one time my mom goes, why? I chuckled and asked, why not? The UN helps people who are underprivileged in a poor area. Even if I just volunteer, I could make an impact by helping others. Not after what my mom said changed my life and the totality of my mindset. She did a simple math. You know, perhaps it's how, this is how Asians become good at math. Anyways, she said, if you are a volunteer make, uh, working in an African village for 20 years, how many people do you think you can really impact? I didn't say anything because I didn't think my mom could just change my career path by saying something like that. Of course, she wasn't implying that this type of volunteering wasn't necessary or help or not helpful, but rather she wanted to show me that how I could take a different route towards the same goal and impact more lives. So she continued, I'm sure you will help people, but you won't be able to change as many people's lives as you would like to because you may be limited by your resources. But think, when Bill Gates wanted to make a donation, he had donated more than 20 billions to agriculture development, emergency relief, global health and education, urban poverty, and so on. So many more things which had changed millions of lives. There, she had finally caught my attention. I started listening to her more closely and thinking about things more critically. I realized that what my mom said was very valid. If my goal was to, in, uh, to make a change in the world and help as many people as I can, there will be a difference for the impact depending on the route I take. I was 15, so I let that thought sink in and I continued to explore life. And little did I know that my mindset about money was changed. I used to think that when a business is maximizing its profit, it is only benefiting itself and the goal of maximizing the profit is conflicted with doing good because doing good might cost more to the business and that might disadvantage them uh, with their competitors with their lower costs. I realized that, however, the ability of business to do good is in fact so huge both for the business themselves and for the society. Oftentimes, when we're thinking about good societal impacts, we think of the nonprofits and charitable donations. Of course, they're playing an important role. However, the donations of these organizations do not have the framework to solve the biggest problems we have today. And they're the first program to be cut out when the individuals or organizations themselves are not doing well financially. They can lose their power and will to donate. Or even if they have a strong will and they're willing to donate all they have, statistics just simply show that donations from charity and nonprofits are not all that we could have been doing. Just last year, the amount of charitable donation is 200 billion. 
in contrast with a $3.7 trillion from business donations. To drive solutions for the biggest problems we have today, we need trillions, not just billions. Now you have seen the power of business doing good. Let's talk about the ethics of business doing good and let's talk about why big corporate business have a social responsibility to give back to the community. The first reason is rather simple. Without the community, there is no business. But let's dig deeper and see how business action can allow for good ethics. What is the post Charlottesville dialogue on racial equality, changes to immigration law that will impact the dreamers or the Paris Climate Change Accord? With the business leaders advocating in a newly public, vigorous and informed way for solutions that align social progress with their core business interests. For the Puerto Rico hurricane relief, the famous beer company Budweiser filled their beer can with water and delivered them to the area to stand with the drinking water shortage. Or the more recent example being that Delta and United Airlines have ended their partnerships with NRA to support the gun law reform. This is great for the social cost, you might say, but what about the company's profit? What about the total shareholder returns? With the same example, in a way, Delta and United Airlines are giving up the profit they are used to earn from the NRA membership to support the social cost. Traditionally, people view doing good will cause them to reduce profit, which hurts the company's goal of maximizing their profit. This may be true in some ways, but Let's say a company that produces chocolate and coffee wanted to do some good, so they decided to, okay, let's partner up with the NGOs and pay higher wages to the farmers. With the traditional view, people will believe that they're doing good by increasing their cost tremendously and not make as much profit and not do well as a business. Well, check under your chairs and they will have there will be like a chocolate bar under their chairs. And um, so it turned out, as you can see, this chocolate bar is from Mars. And this is the company I was talking about. It is now the sixth largest private company. At the same time, unlike their competitors, they're confident in their stable supply of sustainable coca because of their partnerships with the NGOs around the world. And they're working with the small shareholder farmers. These NGOs help farmers to improve crop yields, make sure that farmers get a fair and livable wage, address any human rights issues in supply chains, and minimize the harmful effects on the environment like deforestation. This partnership is a good program for the farming community, the environment, and Mars themselves who benefited from reducing a significant risk of the, in the supply chain. Besides, Mars success story, numerous academic researchers report a positive association between society, um, responsible initiatives, and economic success. Particularly in the recent years, corporate giving programs can provide a, co a competitive advantage when they're, doing when they're well designed and carefully executed. Charitable contributions can increase the name recognition, reputation of a brand or a convey or company or uh, or comply among consumers. For example, when Blake Mikoski founded Tom's in 2006, after a visit to Argentina where he learned that many children got sick or injured because they didn't have shoes to wear and they're running around with barefoot, to combat this, he created Tom's, a business that donates a pair of shoes to the needy people for every pair that's sold. So far, the company has donated more than a million pairs of shoes. Think about one million pair of shoes saving one million lives of children. That's pretty incredible. And just recently, the company has also, um, a few years ago, the companies have uh, launched another initiative that aims to give away a pair of glasses or a uh, size saving surgery for every pair of sunglasses or glasses. So this of course ex exemplifies the fact that uh, consumers also love business, that they're doing good. As we have seen the sales of the company, we feel good when we are buying a product 
that has a good ethic behind it. We feel as though if we are also contributing something, when we are also doing something, uh, when we are also getting some product that we would enjoy. So not only does doing good in business benefit the society, but it also benefits the business itself. Or let's look at what Airbnb did when the earthquakes or crisis happened. Airbnb essentially provided free housing for the people affected by the disaster and the for the crisis survivors and the relief workers. They worked with the NGOs to ensure that people can provide housing for free for refugees. This program is not only so great because people who in need of housing got a place to stay, but also it was a platform for the people who wanted to help but did not know how. In this process, the company also grow as well. Although they are providing the housing for free, but they are also growing the number of hosts and guests, which is one goal of Airbnb in a lot of its um, um, business goals. So as you can see, not only the profit, it, uh, focusing only on the profit is not a comp comprehensive way to evaluate the business or how well they're doing. In some ways, even they're doing something for free, they're gaining too. And this reminds me of something that I did a long time ago. I was doing something for free and I thought it was very tiring and I, I just think that I was in some way losing something. However, by the end of it, I, I thought I gained a lot. So I was um, watching this news uh, on TV. It's a local news channel. And then I, um, it was about a Syrian refugee in the Toledo area I'm staying. And then this refugee, he just moved to Toledo. Um, and then he was making falafels at home really happily. And then um, the camera then suddenly switches to later how he talked about um, missing home, being a chef. He used to um, cook a lot of falafels for people and then he thought that that was his life goal, that he brings people food and then make them happy. And then when he came here, since he didn't speak English, he didn't, he didn't really know how he could continue this passion and then he wasn't doing that well financially for himself to um, open up a restaurant or he doesn't know anything how it would work here. So it kind of um, initiated me to look for an internship that would help him to open up a business. So I um, applied an internship to a, com a business growth company and I learned about the business mm -hmm. campaign to help him to set up the business plan. So after a few weeks, after I meet, and did a lot of research for him. I thought I was losing a lot of my time because for for me to communicate with him, um, he doesn't speak any English, so I, I always have to arrange a translator as well. So it was a lot of time input and there was just a lot of difficulties. I, I was in the learning process as well. But by the end, when he was holding that business plan, he looked so happy. And for me, that was very rewarding. Meeting him made me learn a lot about myself and gain a lot too. Meeting him made me realize that there are a lot of ways to help others. And for many people who lack access to education opportunities, the power lies in their cultural heritage. For him, in this case, it's his Syrian food. And meeting him made me realize that there are a lot of um, that a society today treat people differently with different identities. As I was filling out some of the forms and since he was holding a refugee ID, it, it was different for him to do a lot of the forms. And when I say that, I mean, it's more difficult. And I think meeting him also opened up my eyes of how using business strategy can solve such problems. So if something that small I did, a few weeks of input of time can make such an impact on one person. I'm simply ecstatic to think about what will the world become when all business owners start making impacts. What about the $3.7 trillion becomes a $5 trillion? I'm ecstatic to think about just how much problems that we would have solved with that scale 
And I know that some of you sitting here today already is, or you're on your way to become one of them, those business owners who will make the impacts and make the society good again and solve all the problems. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's uh, talk and you have learned something and maybe about your mindset of how business doing good does not conflict with the business profit. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> no, it's good. I, I wasn't <laughs> no, on, but it, it's so long. It's just supposed to be less than 20 minutes, right? Um, it's, it's like supposed to be around 15 minutes. And some of the people, I think they're only doing it for 10 minutes. I don't know. I wrote mine a bit longer. And I think I, I was a little bit repetitive when I wrote a speech. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I typed up a couple notes and I'll, I'll try to um, make them more clear and, and send them over to you. But I mean, I think you could, um, I guess just on initial reactions, there's a couple um, things that stood out to me that um, I thought, um, I thought there at the end, it would have been kind of cool to tie something back to your, your mom. Like, um, cause that, you know, that kind of stood out at the beginning about how she, you know, helped you to, to have this, um, change in the way that you, you think, uh, you know, the way that you think about money to, to maybe, um, you know, bring that back in somehow. I don't know if, you know, it's even something just as sim simple as, uh, you know, thanking her for that or, um, or, or maybe like even a reference to, you know, that, uh, you know, your mom's role as a parent was to, uh, you know, to try to help you without, um, you know, at, at, at a financial sacrifice, um, you know, and, and so she helped you to see that in that way. Um, the, um, you referred a lot to the NGOs, um, maybe a little bit more of a explanation unless that's kind of a common um, acronym that that your audience is is familiar with but um, I, I I didn't quite catch and, I, and it might just have been that that I uh, didn't hear you say it but to hear you explain what that acronym is um, based on how frequently you you went back to that um, as you were kind of talking about the different um, different organizations. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe just one other, one or two other times where you have that acronym to just use the full, you know, non-government organizations um, phrase would, would, you know, help anybody in the audience that, that um, didn't catch the, the first time that you, you mentioned it. And then um, you, I thought maybe that anecdote at the end of, of helping the gentleman um, just could have been tightened up a little bit. And um I just, you know, there was something as you were going into that, that uh, I don't know if you could take a little bit of the focus off of that that was not a, that you weren't compensated for that. You know, that seems to, you, you kind of make this great point at the beginning about, you know, how initially you, you were idealistic about, you know, thinking that, um, you know, that volunteering was, was the best avenue to affect change in the world and to, to be a positive force. And then, you know, your mom kind of opened your eyes to, you know, that change costs money and that, um, that, you know, uh, by, you know, being successful in a business sense, it can put you in a position to affect greater change. So just it, it, making sure that that, that part of your, your point is, is included in your, your story there at the end about helping, helping the gentleman, maybe something along the lines of, you know, I was fortunate enough to be in a position where, um, you know, my, uh, you know, my needs were met or my, you know, my economic obligations were covered to the, to where I was able to, um, then donate some of my time to be able to, you know, help this, this person, uh, develop their business plan and, and move along. Yeah. Um, I thought something going off that, would that be helpful if I say, if I were just to volunteer at the local organization that helps with refugees, I 
I was if I were to volunteer, I, I know I would be doing a lot of like just the delivery stuff or like helping them with some of their chores or something. And and then I could say that that's not a long term solution for to really help them. It's to help them to become financially stable and then become less dependent on the government, you know, money they're receiving, which is not enough for them to live monthly. Would that be kind of helpful? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, you could almost take it out another layer and talk about the effects of then kind of the spider web that becomes where, you know, now these, these um, refugees are, are in a better position to become a force for change themselves. Right. And, and to, you know, to help others. And it kind of becomes that, that snowball effect of, um, of, you know, being able to, um, to create more of an impact. Mm. I think, oh, uh, one other note I had here was, um, to kind of add the context, you, you give the statistic about, I think it was like personal giving as far as charitable donations totaling 2 billion. And then you, you compare that to the amount of business donations. Um, I was just curious about, you know, in what context are you, is that like a worldwide statistic or is that just focusing on like, you know, us businesses, what, you know, what time periods included in that? Um, I don't know. Was, I think. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think adding. It was like just last year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just adding a um, a little bit of a reference point to statistics like that. I think somehow it it sometimes helps them um, carry a little bit more weight. I thought, you know, your your ties, you know, kind of the the emotional appeal of connecting you know your audience as consumers um you know through the chocolate i i think is a really nice touch um but you know creating something that your whole audience can relate to which is that feeling we get as consumers when we're doing business with with uh, a company that is creating change in the world and how that makes us feel like, you know, we're a part of that as well. I think that that's a really strong point. I think that that is something um, that, you know, that everyone in, in your audience is, is going to be able to relate to and be like, Oh yeah. Aha. Um, so, but I, I would, you know, almost just take that a step further and make sure and reinforce that that in and of itself, being able to create that feeling among consumers, provides business value. Um, so, um, you know, it kind of becomes that, you know, that area where, you know, when a business is doing, is doing, doing right in the world and, and, and making, being a force for change, um, it can have that, that, you know, positive business impact, right? It can have that, um, that public relations effect of, you know, creating, a you know, more dedicated consumers, more, more loyal customers. Mm -hmm.